Hi, my name is Kylie Fowler and my friend Rory Canavan has asked me to present the BYOD process for this month's process of the month. So we will be looking at the primary and secondary objectives of this process. We'll walk through the process itself. We'll look at some of the potential banana skins. We'll say thank you to our sponsors and then look at what's coming up next month. So the primary objective of the BYOD process is to accommodate end users who wish to use their own equipment in a commercial environment. Now, bring your own device, which is what BYOD stands for, is one of those IT hypes that are going up, what Gartner calls the hype cycle, they're going through the hype cycle. So they've been up and up and up and up and they've reached the height of the hype cycle now and then they're starting to head back down. I saw an article the other day that said, bring your own device is not meeting expectations. But I think actually, the bring your own device is more, is, it's not a, an all or nothing thing. It's not something that individual organisations or corporations say to, to their employees, right, everybody, you're going out and buying your own equipment. I think very few organisations were ever going to end up in that position. We need to think of BYOD as a spectrum. So at one end of the spectrum, you've got people who have their own smartphone and they just wish to be able to access their emails. They set it up themselves through ActiveSync and off they go. At the other spectrum is that full-blown bring your own device environment where companies and organisations are potentially giving their employees an allowance to go out and buy the equipment that they actually need to use. But there's tax implications with that, by the way. So that's another very good reason, aside from all the support and the information security issues associated with bring your own device, that it hasn't got off the ground. There's a, there's a lot of legal and regulatory issues around it which, are ma which make the pure BYOD much more, much trickier than people are expecting. Now the secondary objective is to ensure all IT and hardware requirements have been met prior to permitting privately owned equipment onto a corporate network. Now it's important to recognise that with Bring Your Own Device, the risks associated with the hardware and the actual software installed on the device, any devices, is minimal. There's a few licensing issues that you might come across. There'll probably be subscriptions that if you don't manage them properly, you could end up forgetting to cancel them when an employee leaves the organisation. But those risks pale into com pale when compared to the information security risks inherent, even with allowing just somebody to access emails on their smartphone. They could easily be sent commercially sensitive emails and they could easily be sent attachments that are commercially sensitive which download onto that smartphone. So unless you have the appropriate protections in place to ensure that any corporate data can be wiped from those devices if an, if an employee leaves, you're running huge risks. So it's really important when you're actually thinking about how to implement this process from an IT asset management perspective that you work with information security to ensure that the processes are aligned with their requirements. So moving on to walking through the process itself, um, <coughs> the bring your own device process will be triggered by either a software request or through the joiners, movers and leavers process. So when we receive the request for some sort of bring your own device service, we need to think about the software and the hardware platform separately. We need to put them through separate sub-processes. So, so with regards to the software, we need to understand what software is required and how they're going to access those, that software. It will usually be a software as a service or a platform as a service product, but we still find some traditional Petrol licenses can be used in personal devices as well, so it does it does depend. But generally, these days would be SaaS or PaaS. We create a profile for these individuals, and then communicate, which is on the next page. We then communicate that SaaS or PaaS profile to the IT department to enable them to deploy it 
through a software change management process. Now jumping back to the previous page, we need to also assess the hardware that the, that the end user is planning to use. So we need to ensure that it is appropriate hardware for what they're trying to do, that it is secure and can be secured on the corporate environment and that it is supportable. So if it's not supportable, then we do need to make sure that we, we communicate back to the end user what the problems are and possibly provide them with a recommended shortlist of hardware that they should be buying instead. If the BYOD hardware platform is approved, then we go back to the second page and we communicate that hardware assessment approval to the IT department and then the IT department will install the software on the end user's equipment again through that software change management process. And as I said before, we probably if we if we're not able to support the the hardware that the end user would like to to use, then we would actually provide them with some sort of recommended hardware hardware device list. So it's a relatively straightforward process. Uh, and as I said, the critical thing is just to make sure it's aligned with information security because that's where the biggest risks lie. So the potential banana skins is not having an authorised channel to manage Bring Your Own Device. And this goes back to the fact that because Bring Your Own Device is a spectrum, a lot of companies think they're not doing it, but they still say to me, oh, well, you know, people can access email by Active Sync. We've not stopped that, but we don't really know who's doing it. So even, even though officially the answer is no, you do need to make sure that you are aware of what's going on in your organisation and work with information security to implement appropriate processes to protect your organisation, even when it is something as simple as just allowing emails on a smartphone. And then the second one is not having a close down loop to suspend PaaS and SAS accounts when staff members leave. And this also, again, is a similar situation. Information security have the same requirement for access controls when staff members leave. I mean, this is, a, this is actually um, a good indication of how important it is to ensure that this process is aligned with your joiners, movers, leavers process, because that's where these activities will be picked up. So at this point, I'd like to say much love to our sponsors. And the URL at the bottom there is the SAM Charter Process Kit if you're interested in purchasing and downloading it. And next month, we have the software reharvesting process. And here are Rory's contact details if you'd like to get in touch with him. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little session. Bye.